everyone, Robert the Bruce back again. We got a strategy video for you today. We're gonna to be talking about Rush. And the nice thing about this is it doesn't require a squad or a team to help you. It's the stuff you can do on your own that helps make Rush a little bit easier. It's Rush tactics for the common man. Gotta love the cheese there. But seriously, you can do this on your own. It's great stuff. I, I love using a lot of these tactics in my everyday plays in Rush. Um, we'll dive right in. This first clip, we're doing our thing. We finish up A, and we're moving on to B. This is one of my favorite things to do when an MCOM is in a building. Destroy the walls to arm it. Uh, it when you're on defense, it's harder to defend an objective that has multiple paths leading into it. So you taking out that wall, not only do you get a quick arm that the enemy doesn't expect, but you've effectively created more paths in that they're going to have to deal with defending. Um, so even if they disarmed that one somehow, now you've got several different ways you and your buddies can attack. It just makes your life a lot easier when you're moving in to arm these objectives. So if it's in a building, take out a wall. It's that simple. Next one, wait 21 seconds before running to the next MCOM. This seems kind of weird, but follow me on the math here. It's not that complicated. It's 30 seconds on a wait period between when the last MCOM goes off and the next one allows you to run to it. There's that red no man's land that you can't go into, and if you do, it starts the 10 second countdown. I throw in a one second buffer with that, getting 21 seconds. Let me explain a little close what I mean. I'm actually gonna pop up a counter here once this objective goes off so you can see. Boom, there it is, 30 seconds counting down. Now obviously you're just counting in your head, that's why I throw in the one second buffer, so if you're off a little bit, you can still probably survive. You see on the map, you've got that red area down on the mini-map. If you run in there, like you see here, and I hop in this tank, it starts that 10 second countdown of death. Get out of here! Well, if you count to 21, that means there's about 9 seconds left before it allows you to be in this area. So with 10 seconds for you to survive in this area, you take off, and just like I do there, you get to the very farthest point you can, and right before you're about to die, bam, takes away the no man's land, and you're very close to arming that next MCOM. Especially if you've got you and a few buddies doing this, or you hop in a Jeep, I mean, you could be at the MCOM arming it by the time this goes off. It's a beautiful thing. Uh, we'll do it, show it one more time. They just went off again, so you've got the timer there. Here I am getting up close, watching for enemies, making sure the coast is clear. This doesn't always work. You know, if you're in a battle with, with bad guys or something, you know, you're not going to be able to keep track in your head counting down. So it's no, no worries. And it, you'll die plenty of times as well. You'll take off. You'll get antsy. We do it all the time, and it's hilarious. And, and it's no harm, no foul. No big deal. But when you get it counted right, like I do here, man, I'm practically on the boat by the time that goes off. These guys aren't even close to being here. They think they've got time. They're still getting set up. I'm already arming the objective and, uh, and getting in position. So the, the risk um, is not that big and the reward is great. So do the math and try it out. Next up, use your EOD bot. There's all kinds of scenarios where I absolutely love using my EOD bot on offense and defense. This one was just fun, taking off a little jump there and running into that guy as he tries to defuse. Gotta love it, get the kill, save the arm, good stuff. But there's a lot of legitimate ways you can use it. It is a weapon, as shown there, you can kill guys with the torch of it. You can arm the MCOM as I'm rearming it because he got the defuse right before I could kill him after a little bit of fail driving there. Um, you can defuse this shot here. I just had it parked next to it, so I switched to it when they uh, armed it. Get the quick defuse. And then when I back out of it again, I'm across the map doing other stuff. I'm not even close to the objective. But I'm still helping the team with my EOD bot there. It's a great distraction, even. Um, that's one of my favorite things about it. It's not, not every time I get to arm or disarm with it, but just driving it in and around and uh, trying to get in there and do some stuff, a lot of guys don't even know how to kill them very well. They'll throw a grenade at it as if you're going to like stop and let that blow up. Or they'll start unloading their whole entire uh, clip or magazine of rounds towards you, but they'll shoot towards the top of the EOD bot so they won't even hurt it hardly. It'll just kind of fizzle, but you'll stay alive. Um, which, by the way, shoot the base of it if you're trying to take one out, because it's a lot wider, it's a lot easier to hit. Like that guy right there. He's shooting at me. Little damage, no problem. I move on to get the second arm. Um, yeah, shoot the base if you want to take one out, though. It's much easier that way. You can take him out pretty quick. 
I love to arm objectives and then back up and guard with the EOD bot. I don't even ever bring my, my actual guy up there. Because when, when enemies run in, most of the time they're looking for other bodies to, to shoot at and to worry about. So if you're just a little EOD bot tucked away in a corner, you just look like debris or something random. No big deal. Guys will overlook it often. Uh, here we are having a real hard time breaking into this area. Well, what do you know? There's tons of baddies around. I just drive an EOD bot right through them. I'm not even paying attention. Then, in this particular clip, that allowed the rest of us to actually move in after that. Because enemies go into panic mode and they all look at the bomb site like, oh, what's going on? Well, we can move in and clean house. Here, I'm not even close to it again. I'm, I'm over here, tucked away. Well, they just armed the MCOM. I'm going to switch to my EOD bot, which I strategically placed near it, but out of the way enough they wouldn't think about it. They've got their Amtrak there, they're doing all kinds of damage, but they don't notice my little bot just rolling up, get the defuse, go back and park it again, no big deal. It's almost like having an extra player on your team, because if it gets blown up, you're still there to do some work. So try it out, let me know what you think. Last one, stay close to the MCOMs, and this is so basic, it's silly that I'm even putting it in here, but I play with so many teams that, on defense and offense, they take running way off and they lie to themselves that they're helping the team but they're not they're not close you'll see in these two clips i throw up that we our team is all over spamming grenades doing some work uh guarding the mcoms after we've planned uh after we've armed them uh and that actually wraps it up for this video i'll have some more uh, rush tactics videos coming out in the future so stay tuned for that um if you haven't subscribed yet no better time than now um, be the first to know when new stuff comes out, and it always motivates me to do more videos. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, if you want to get me even more involved, uh, check us out on Battle Log. We've got the Yesh Gaming Platoon, actually maxed out on members, so we've got Yesh Gaming 2 Platoon. Exact same thing, I post all the same updates on both of them. You can get involved there, uh, join us at the website, yeshgaming.com. We've got contests and giveaways, um, all kinds of fun stuff going on. Oh, and here's one more little tidbit to take with you. Only rookies can't the enemy spawn.